Why was Sir Barristan Selmy called the Brave? What qualities did he have that allowed him to serve so many kings? Why is he considered such an accomplished warrior? Friends, let's find out. A hall to die in, and men to bury me. I thank you, my lords, but I spit on your pity. I am a knight. I shall die a knight. Early in his reign, Jaehaerys found himself already embroiled in the War of the Nine Penny Kings. This was a war between that band of nine, made up of merchants, mercenaries and pirates from the three cities, and the Seven Kingdoms. The Nine had conquered the Stepstones, a chain of islands east of Dawn, and the King knew their ambitions would be an invasion of the Seven Kingdoms. They carried out the attacks on behalf of Melis Blackfire. He was the last of the Blackfire pretenders who made claims to the Iron Throne, based on all the bastards of King Aegon IV being legitimised as he died. In reaction to this, the king brought together his bannermen and chose to meet them. The attack was to be made on the Stepstones themselves, and though the king wanted to lead it himself, his hands persuaded him to stay, and so it was led by Lord Ormond Baratheon. The armies landed on three of the Stepstones, and battle raged over the islands for nearly a year. The king's hand was killed by Millie's Blackfire, and died in the arms of his son. So Gerald Hightower took over command, and the king's forces continued to be hard-pressed. The Golden Company was with Malice, founded by an earlier bastard. The company is made up of highly disciplined and organised soldiers, who wore their riches upon their person. And a young knight, Sir Barristan, cut through their forces, and made a path to the last of the black fires, and in single combat slew him. The remains of the Blackfire's forces soon fled back to their own domains, and with his sword stroke, Sir Barristan Selmy ended the last of the pretenders, whose rebellions had plagued the Targaryen dynasty over many years, and the realm returned to peace, and Sir Barristan's reputation was established throughout the Seven Kingdoms. The greatest tale of Sir Barristan starts in Duskendale. Once a wealthy harbour, as King's Landing grew, the monies in Duskendale shrunk. Dennis Darkling wanted this to stop and asked for and was denied a special charter that would give him some autonomy from the crown and help restore some of his wealth. Darklin stopped paying his taxes and asked the king to come so he could petition him face to face. Tywin counselled against this and the king deep into his madness and his relationship with Tywin strained on hearing this accepted the invite. It was of course a trap and the king was taken and most of his escort killed. To take back the king would not be an easy task. Duskendale had both strong walls and a fort that overlooked the harbour. Tywin began to gather forces, and Dennis said any attempt or attack would end with the death of the king. Instead of attacking directly, Tywin blockaded Duskendale by land and sea, to perhaps starve out the upstart Dennis Darkling. Cut off, the will of the Lord faded. He asked for parley. Tywin refused, wanting the complete surrender of the town. Both sides had on their hearts, Darkling to get better terms, Tywin to have his terms met. Tywin made one last demand, with word that should Dennis not surrender, then he would take the town by storm and kill all who lived inside. The small council advised against this, fearing Darkling would kill the king of the Seven Kingdoms. Into this dangerous deadlock, Sir Barristan Selmy stepped in, offering to enter in secret, get into the fort and rescue the king. Tywin, thinking the plan madness, still had such respect that he gave Barristan a day to accomplish his plan. Using night time to hide himself, first he scaled the walls, using only his hands, and once in the town he disguised himself as a hooded beggar. From there he made his way to the Dunfort and scaled its walls. He was seen at some point and killed a guard on the walkway, so the alarm could not be raised. From there he used stealth and perhaps some of the concealment of darkness to make his way to the dungeon and find the king. Once the king was out, his absence was discovered and an alarm was raised. With stealth no longer his ally, he had to show his prowess. The first to fall to his sword was Lord Darkling's brother and master at arms, and then two guards he killed unawares. More got in his way and he fought through them leading the king to the stables. They found horses and were able to ride out before the gates could be closed. Once in the town they raced through the streets of Duskendale as horns and trumpets raised the alarm and made for the walls. Tywin's archers offered support to clearing the walls with their arrows. And they made it out. The king's safe and the standoff was broken. 
Then his darkling and his family were brought in chains to the king. The king wanted their deaths and those of uncles and aunts and distant relatives. The brother of Dennis, Simon Darkling, who Sir Barristan had slain rescuing the king, had a nephew, and he was spared as a boon to Sir Barristan by the king. While Sir Barristan continued to serve, the last shreds of the king's sanity had been taken by his captivity. What do you think to some of the great deeds Selma performed? Does he deserve his reputation? Could he have defeated Jamie Lannister if they had ever faced off? Comment down below. Thank you for checking out my video. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications.